Okay guys, so I've got my basic swatch here. I'm going to grab my black selection arrow here, just mouse over and whoops, let's open up this swatch palette here and I will drag uh, my new uh, swatch into here. Here you go, I drag it in there and let's give it a name. I'll just click off because if I go and double click on it now what will happen is that it will apply the swatch to the swatch so I don't want that. I'm going to double click here and I'm going to call it sweater texture. Okay and now when I go through my swatches I will know what that is even though I haven't named my own swatches over here, but never mind. All right, I'll get rid of that. So now I can effectively get this swatch into this document a couple of different ways. One way is by just dragging it like this, which is, you know, it's okay. It's a good way to do it. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I can also use this fun little tool here. This is the eyedropper, and you can see there it is, eyedropper tool. You don't have to select anything with this tool. You just click, and it picks up whatever it has just kind of eyedroppered. In this case, pattern with black stroke. Let's change that to pattern with white stroke. So I've just clicked the stroke down here. That brings up a dialog box over here. Let's pick white as our stroke color. And now that my eyedropper is set on that, if I just hit the Alt key or option key on a Mac. I can literally pour that and I'm just clicking down on these areas and that just kind of gives me more definition but whoops let's go back one step I hit the by the way I hit the brush line and that put the it literally put that fill on the the brush stroke line I don't want that right now okay so keep going and we're gonna change those uh, uh, brush strokes to white in a second so that we can see them again. I'll use my direct select tool and I can kind of see where these are because I'm kind of used to doing this. I will go control Y so I can get a preview in case you're having trouble doing that. Hold the shift key down as I said and now you can make multiple selections. Control Y again brings me back to the normal screen. I'm going to double click on my brush and I'm now going to set it to hue shift say OK and apply. Yes, I'm going to apply it here back to my palette. So a bit of jumping around here. We're going to change our stroke color to white. And that will change these lines into white, which is totally great. So there you have the basic sweater. I didn't include some of the construction lines on this tutorial, but that should kind of take care of it. And I'll just kind of to show you where we're going, I'll throw some other textures in here. Kind of Oops, again, I put it on the wrong area. It's got to be, I got to bring my, whatever area I want to affect in color in Adobe Illustrator, I need to bring to the foreground. Otherwise, I just put that pattern on the stroke, not on the fill, which is fine. But, you know, so here I have this kind of pattern I did earlier. Here's another crazy one, a sort of Mayan looking thing. Uh, I have this tiki one uh, I have here's an illustrator one so you can just kind of play with those there's a lot of pattern options in illustrator there's also a menu up here if you go menu swatch libraries tech on the where is it it's right down I always forget where this is patterns duh okay and we'll say let's say nature and we'll say nature animal skins okay and here we have a bunch of again same idea I can just pour it, just grab it, and you know, it's kind of fun, right? Whoops, I didn't really grab that one. Anyways, you get the idea here. And you got a lot of, this is a, a much more kind of a fast process than working with Adobe Photoshop. Nothing wrong with Photoshop, however, for product and garment development or bag development, which I do, uh, I find Adobe Illustrator really the much more useful and friendly product for getting work done fast. Thank you very much.